What's up, everybody? James Drake here. And right off the bat, I want to thank Dave Dugdale over at learningdslrvideo.com for inviting me over to check out the A7S and the GH4. Uh, Dave has awesome reviews coming out all the time, so check his website out. I also want to shout out my buddy Caleb Cole, who came and did the behind-the-scenes footage for this uh, setup. And he's an awesome guy, so thank you, dude. All right, jumping right in here. Uh, today we're looking at the low light capabilities of the Red Epic, Sony A7S, and Panasonic GH4. Um, starting with the Red Epic, you know, uh, we shot it on uh, Red Gamma 3 at 1600 ISO, and the lens we had on both the Epic and the Sony was the Tamron 24-70 f2.8. So right off the bat, you know you're in kind of a, a, a trouble situation here. You're shooting at f2.8. There's only one key light, and that's Dave's iPhone here, which we set to full brightness, casting on his face. We're in a basement. There's a white wall. There's some stairs behind him. This is a notoriously difficult thing for cameras to shoot in low light uh, because there's no detail for it to grab onto, so it has to try to make it up, um, but it's just struggling here. And the cool thing is... Um, you know, we want to have this nice light uh, nighttime feel, so we push the sensor over to 2800 Kelvin. And um, it's pretty common knowledge that the Mysterium X sensor tends to prefer daylight. It's a daylight balance sensor. Um, so once you start going towards the 2800 Kelvin side of the spectrum, you start getting a little bit more blue channel noise. And so it was really interesting to me as an Epic owner to see, okay, where does the red compared to these cameras that are that are coming out now, the GH4, the A7S. And it's worth noting that RED doesn't do any in-camera denoising. They very much are, uh, their post debayer RED code is, is very much all about doing things in post. And so obviously you can throw on um, RED Giant's denoiser or neat video onto this footage, add some sharpening, and you can start getting away with a lot. But I wanted to see straight out of camera Without the denoising um, on the red, what are we going to look at? And compare that to the A7S and the GH4, which very likely do have in-camera denoising. You know, how does it stack up? What are we looking at? So, this first clip here, 1600 ISO. We're at red gamma 3. Check our source settings make sure that's all true. Again, 2800 ISO. Nothing applied here. This is kind of just straight out of the camera. No look. Um, you can see it's pretty dark. There's... Quite a bit of noise going on here, playing around, even on his face where there's some light, but especially in this area over here, blue channel noise and all the areas that are dark. You can't even really see the phone that Dave's holding, which is about right here. Um, pretty crazy. And so it's been an interesting journey with the Red Epic in low light. Uh, I'd say 95% of shooting opportunities are great, but there's that 5% you just wish, man, I had a little bit more low light capability. Uh, I haven't tested the Dragon sensor. I've heard some people say it's better. Can't say that I myself know either way. Um, but it's really a great sensor just in the low light area. Could use, you know, a little improvement as opposed to what's coming out these days. Um, so that's kind of the epic there. Let's take a look at the GH4. Right away, you can see the blacks are substantially cleaner. Uh, again, there's a little bit more contrast here, so the blacks have pretty much gone to nothing, down to zero. So that probably helps a lot with the noise. Ten seconds um, left. Oh, geez. Let's probably mute the audio. So we're rolling here. You can still see, though, on his face where we have our only detail in the frame, that there is some movement around here. By the way, I know this is a screen capture, and it's probably being compressed to heck, so... I am going to put up all these shots on my blog, and it's probably a much better way to look at the noise because my guess is it's probably going to be tough to see really what's going on with the compression layer of what's happening here on the uh, screen capture. But that being said, uh, I did want to do it because there's a lot going on here, and I feel like it's easier for me to explain via screen capture rather than, uh, well, the blog will be good too, but this is a, a good avenue. So... Here we are, this is the A7S, and on this particular setup we use the Cinegamma 4, or Cine 4 setup. And you can see right away, the interesting thing is that between the GH4 and the A7S, the A7S seems to be pulling quite a bit more light off of Dave's face here. Uh, it seems like there's a, a more level, I should say. 
and at the same ISO, it's it's pretty cool to see that. It just means that the camera right away we know is going to be sensitive. So again, GH4 here, and one more time at the A7S. And it's slightly out of focus. I think I fixed that. Yeah, there we go. What's really cool that may not be able to see in the screen capture is this black is just pretty much inky black. I mean, this 1600 on the A7S looks like, I mean, 800 on the Epic or even 400 on the Epic. And, and it just, it's, it's crisp. You could put this up on a screen and, and I would have no issues with that, right? It's 1600 with no detail. So that's pretty cool. Um, let's go ahead and move up to the ISO 3200. So with the red, because we're using the same clip here, we're just going to go into source settings and punch this up to 3200. And again, this is metadata, so ultimately you can shoot a clip once with the red for these low light tests because this is selectable. Whether you want to do 50 or 12,000, it's, it's one clip with metadata adjustment here, and it's a pretty cool feature. Um, but you can see that's bringing up quite a lot of noise in the blue channel here. And... There's not much detail to be had on Dave's hair here. And over in these areas, it's just kind of the, the blue snow that we all kind of fear. Uh, I still can't really see this camera, or I'm sorry, this phone in his hand that's lighting his face. So even though we've increased the ISO on the red, we're not really starting to see into these shadows and get any more detail. So that was kind of an interesting note for me. So let's go over to the GH4. Now at 3200, you can see that we have quite a lot more fa uh, light on his face here. You can see his, his hand and the detail starting to come out here. And you can also see some detail on these stairs as well as this pillar right here. I mean, as opposed to the Epic with the increase in uh, ISO, it doesn't really give us more detail. It gave us a little bit more light here on his face. It didn't give us any more detail in the background. The GH4, on the other hand, very much did. Now, of note, I, I do think that the noise is kind of weird on the GH4. Uh, I don't know if you can see it or not, reference the picture, but it's kind of this weird, uh, hard to explain, wormy or blotchy pattern of noise. It's not really the, the blue snow that you're used to seeing. It's more of a, I don't know, it's like the, the noise pieces are just bigger and softened, which is probably due to the in-camera uh, denoising and things like that. But it's kind of a weird low light thing. Um, we are seeing more, but... I don't know if I would feel good about shooting 3200 on the GH4 if I have a big white wall with no texture or detail. It would just be pushing the limits of what I'd be comfortable with in a production scenario. So now, um, onto the A7S. At 3200, they give you the option of S-Log2, uh, which locks you in at 3200 or above. You can't go below that, which is interesting. But at 3200, you can start using the S-Log2 uh, gamma, but just for kicks, we'll go over to the Cine Gamma 4, take a look at that, all right, and that's the uh, HD, if you will, curve applied kind of look. So you can see right away, the GH4, I don't know, it's, it's good, it's got quite a bit of level, um, but I would say between the two, the A7S is definitely the better looking image. It's, it's more natural representation of what's going on. The color in Dave's eyes really stands out nicely. And here, that's blue. I mean, that's definitely blue. The A7S, on the other hand, it's captured that hazel in Dave's eyes, which to me is a really strong indicator that this camera obviously is a great contender in low light. There's still some small blotchy stuff weird going on in the background here, but overall, when you play it, it's a much nicer feel. And yeah, there's noise, but it's pretty strong. And this is something that I would have no problem denoising. Or even in a, a rush scenario, you could use this in a, a run and gun type setup. Uh, but that being said, just check out the contrast on his hand here outside of this white wall. And again, only being lit by his phone, and we're starting to see detail all over. That's pretty impressive. Let's also jump over to the S-Log2 on the A7S here. Obviously, you can see it flattens everything out quite a bit. Um, and the level on Dave's face actually looks like it's gone down a little bit, but I'm sure that has to do with the highlight protection, which we'll look at here in a minute, of the S-Log format. The downside, of course, of using S-Log internal on the camera is that it's 8-bit, and it requires pretty substantial grading. And, uh, I mean, it can be a look for sure, 
but you definitely want to be careful with that because 8 bits of color data it really is just going to be stretching that to the max. You're going to see some banding, you're going to see some compression artifacts. Uh, my thinking is that Sony is probably going to push their external recording options with the 4K output on the A7S for S-Log. I think that's why they included it. I mean, I can't say for sure, but I would say in a professional environment, uh, external recorder is pretty much a must if you're going to go with this ultra flat look. Um, well, of course, unless you want it to export super flat, which nobody does. Or maybe you do. I don't know. Moving on. Uh, so, one other quick note here. If we wanted to compare apples to apples, let's say S-Log2. Red also includes something called Red Log Film in their gamma curve selections. And essentially, if this was a, a different image, you'd see it flatten out just like the S-Log would. Um, and between the two, Red Gamma 3 is kind of the curve applied HD kind of look. Uh, the Red Log Film is very much the flat, kind of needs to be graded kind of thing. And uh, But even with applying this curve, I mean, you can almost see a stair here. And you can see this pillar. And you can almost see his hand here, but just not really the same ballpark here because this is definitely more clear. There's not noise competing with this contrast quite as much. And uh, so I was pretty surprised when I saw that. I was like, wow, the, uh, the A7S is definitely kicking some butt, making some new gains. So props to Sony for developing that. Um, now... On that same note, I thought it would be cool to kind of look forward at the extreme ISOs. And what we'll do here is we'll push the Epic to 12,800, which, frankly, I never go past 1,600 um, because of this. I mean, even with severe noise reduction and insane techniques, I don't think this would be salvageable. It's just too much noise on top of our detail here. And you really can't get anything out of that. It's just too much. So you'd be better off using a lower ISO in the red, boosting the contrast, which is a great option. Uh, and keep in mind, again, this is red log film, so it's bringing out the noise in the shadows because it's intended to be graded. And so if we went down back to a red gamma 3, um, you know, your, your darks would go a little bit darker again. And again, with grading, you know, obviously this over here is not something you care about seeing, so you could drop this off a little bit. But the important parts are detail, like hair and the face and, and things like that. And it's just a lot of noise competing with that. So uh, here's where it really gets amazing. Uh, here we are at 12,800 on the A7S. And we are on the Cinegama here. And it's crazy to me that this iPhone is almost blowing out Dave's face. Back here, we've got tons of light on here. This is really starting to come out. And this is... I mean, honestly, this is a pretty reasonable thing to do some noise reduction on and use in most applications. Maybe not on a 65-foot theater screen, but, you know, for your typical direct-to-web kind of thing, like, this is actually usable at 12,800. Uh, if we jump over to the S-Log, same deal. You've got tons of information kind of all over the place. You also notice that Dave's face here... Uh, the highlights have come back quite a lot. Uh, if you compare the two between the Cinegama and the S-Log, I mean, it's just, it's remarkable how much information that this thing is, is keeping on here. So if we keep cruising, if we keep going up, say let's go to 25,000 ISO, I'm, st I'm blown away. I mean, I feel like this is usable off the A7S. Um, I, I don't know. It's just blowing my mind. I mean, we've got full light on his face, like good level on Dave's face from his iPhone. Uh, this is starting to look like daytime or afternoon or something up here in the lights. And uh, jump over to the Cine. You can see the, the Cine Gamma 4 is starting to lose, almost blowing out his face here. Um, obviously, it's punching the, the highlights there to give you that contrast. But I don't know. It's just phenomenal to me how much we're actually seeing here. Uh, jumping up to 50,000, 52,000, whatever it is, ISO. His face is now blowing out. Like, this is incredible. This is gone. And, uh, again, dynamic range of the S-Log, keeping all this detail. It's looking like daytime. I mean, this is incredible. 50,000 ISO, and it is safely, in my opinion, my two cents, between 12,000 and 25,000 seems to be the top of the limit of the 
uh, A7S, but even still, I mean, 25,000 ISO. I have this urge to go make a film at 25,000 ISO and just force myself to use that the entire time to see what kind of interesting production uh, variables it creates. Like, what are you going to light with? Like, how are you going to deal with this, you know, this new low light capability? You're not going to use a 1200 HMI because that's obviously going to blow out immediately. You're lighting with an iPhone, and, and so it's it's kind of crazy how things are progressing here. Uh, just cruise through 100,000, 200,000, and then 400,000 ISO. I mean, at this point, S-Log is blowing out on Dave's face. If you look over to the Cinegama, it's just gone. And this looks like daytime. I mean, keep in mind, this is like where you can't see anything. This is where we started, and this is where we're ending. I mean, it's just not even the same image. It's it's incredible. But again, I'd, I'd keep it probably around 25,000 ISO, which still, coming from no light to this, unbelievable. Lighting with an iPhone. Lighting up these stairs. It's great. It's awesome. Uh, check the blog. I'm going to put up some screenshots so you can check it out yourself. And we do have a dynamic range test and a rolling shutter test and, and kind of a run and gun test that we did. And hopefully I'll be posting those soon. And I know Dave's going to post his review very soon as well. Thanks for checking this out. Stay tuned and we'll talk to you soon.